Let's talk about what the League of Explorers legendaries might look like in Saviors of Uldoom. Doom. I've got some conspiracies in this one. Hey, buddy, watch this. Yeah, I took a crack at what I think the League of Explorers legendaries might look like based on some hints we've seen so far with some artwork that's been released, uh, things we saw in the trailer just based on the histories of the characters because Hearthstone is really nostalgic right now and kind of looking back into past eras. So I designed some custom cards here that are probably going to be nothing remotely close to what the final versions of these characters will be in Saviors of Uldoom, but it might get your gears turning a little bit, might get you thinking, and you might see some things in the final cards that are at least a little bit reminiscent of these. That said, uh, let's jump into these potential legendary cards. For my first four cards here, they're all going to follow a single theme, and that's sort of a tin foil hat conspiracy theory uh, introduced to me by all people, uh, Bikini Body, a famous Rainbow Six YouTuber with over a million subs, sent me a message on Twitter, and he's like, hey, Regis, all of the characters in League of Explorers very deliberately have mounts. And this is something I've heard, you know, tossed about on Twitch chat and maybe seen on Reddit as well. And some other people said, well, you know, Regis, they also all had very uh, identifiable weapons in the trailer. But if you look closely, each of the characters in the key art and in the trailer, they're all featured on mounts. You can see here, at least the Moon Rider, as I'm calling her, is on a horse. And we have seen this idea of mounts before in the past in Hearthstone with cards like Spike Ridge Steed. That was basically mounting a character and then when it died, it leaves behind the mount itself, the Stegadon. I didn't take that exact approach where the mount style cards would just be buffs, but I thought maybe they could be spells and maybe they could be something that's uh, more representative of an in-game aura. Because these are legendary cards, right? And they're super iconic characters. I don't think you can just kind of have a buff card attached to them. I thought it needed to be something a little bigger and grander in scale. So for each of these first four versions of the League, they're all going to have a mount and a corresponding weapon that were teased in the trailer. So without further ado and without any more setup here, let's take a look at Elise the Moon Rider herself. Four mana, four, five here. You'll note that I bumped up the stat lines and followed a mana progression for all of these um, based on their original appearances in the League of Explorers expansion. So Elise goes up to a four, five. Uh, she has a battle cry that reads, add Moonrider's Stampede and Elune's Grace to your hand. And those would be two on-curve plays that I think capture the idea of her essentially riding a horse here with Moonrider Stampede. This would be a five mana spell to follow up that reads, if you have no spells in your deck, and each of these will have unconditionality, for the rest of the game, your minions have Rush. So pulling in that really powerful Dr. Boom Mad Genius style effect, but you have to have no spells in your deck. So you have to have a super minion based deck. Now, that's not much of a compromise, but it's still uh, hard to build a deck with exclusively minions. You know, spells offer a lot of opportunity, particularly in Druidic class that successfully uses spells all the time. So you have a check on this, but if you succeed on that check, much like the Reno of old in League of Explorers, then you get this really cool buff. And I wanted the weapon to go counter to that. So the weapon here is Elune's Grace, a six mana weapon, which I know has some implications in wild format in particular, where you've got another weapon, Twig of the World Tree, that's really scary to combine with other weapons, but we're just gonna have to solve that problem later because this is the six mana one three that reads your opponent's minions cannot have rush. So if you can keep this weapon equipped, if you're not desperately using it to ping stuff off or using your hero power in combination with it as a druid, which could be nice, then you're going to potentially be able to deny things like Dr. Boom Mad Genius while your opponents have Rush, creating a really uh, you know, favorable board state for you where each turn you're going to get something really cool happening. Now, admittedly, this can be removed by weapon removal. Of course, that's the case with all weapons. We've seen legendary weapons in the past, though, where they still work despite that, so I'm not worried about that. But uh, I like this where you can, if you get these things to work successfully, create a really favorable position, but there's some risk inherent to it. Elise herself is not a particularly good play. There's a lot of mana baked into these sorts of things. So you do have to commit to a game plan here, but then Elise will set you up really nicely with her horse, which apparently is so fast that everything gets rush. So that said, let's move on to Bran, and he is riding a dinosaur, and he's actually got two different kind of weapons shown in the trailer. He's got a whip, but you'll note that 
all the characters have whips at some level in fedoras which is named in the trailer but he also has a big gun in one of the pieces of artwork so i wanted to give him a dinosaur that he's clearly riding and a gun so bran is a three mana three four add rampaging devil swords and big old boom stick to your hand those are four and five mana cards respectively devil source reads if you have no battle cry minions in your deck so another check on this one for the rest of the game your minions have plus two attack so a sort of uh you know like a quest rogue or a buff here where everything just comes out a little bigger your tundra rhinos are four fives your timber wolves are three ones as long as they're on the field they're going to just automatically get this buff forever and of course that's a pretty scary proposition in hunter a class that can be really aggressive but you can't have any battle cry minions so for instance you can't have things like spring paw that adds a card to your deck and that will instantly put a check on what you can do and perhaps make it a little harder to build a deck to support brand although probably not impossible and that's where this card falls and then the big old boomstick essentially does the opposite and when you attack things with a big old boomstick those minions instantly get their attack reduced so that you take less damage so you get plus two attack on your stuff and when you clear things you give it negative two attack so it could also just be used to go face right that's basically an arcanite reaper which is something that hunters would absolutely love but if you need to clear a taunt or just get a minion out of the way without taking a ton of damage then it creates that opportunity as well so this one's all about attack manipulation which may seem like a random thing for brand but i thought if you're looking at dinosaurs specifically if you know a roaring dinosaur seemed like the kind of thing that would uh <laughs> make everything uh, a little more aggressive and perhaps uh, a big old boomstick if it's a ranged weapon you would take less damage when utilizing it so I thought it kind of made sense even if not the best fit necessarily for brand certainly still a good fit for hunter so moving on here I took a crack at Finley the beetle master riding this uh, beetle in the artwork sometimes a golden beetle sometimes looks a little more like jeweled and I think it's actually already been confirmed by Mike Denae that this is going to be called the jeweled scarab so this name's kind of already out of date but that's okay and he's also holding this weapon that is like this golden fish and i just straight yoinked this name from twitch chat and from reddit i don't have credit because i saw it from multiple people but a lot of people are saying a great name for this would be splash bringer based on the ash bringer pun but it's a fish so it splashes <laughs> that's fantastic go incredibly clever uh, Hearthstone community. I was just going to call it like the golden fish. Uh, but Finley here, a one mana 2-3, which is, is clearly very strong. But to follow my stat progression, which I thought would be cute, I made him a 2-3 because he gets that bumped attack. And uh, because of that, because I know this is just a really good one mana minion and a fantastic Murloc opener, I wanted to make Finley's support cards here a little bit more awkward, uh, not nearly as powerful. So the Golden Beetle follows the kind of Golden Kobold line we've seen in Hearthstone where Golden Things transform stuff. And this one reads, if you have a new hero power, so something that was not your default basic hero power, which we know will be achievable via legendary quests that are coming, then you can transform all one cost minions in your deck into two cost legendary minions. So they get upgraded, but only barely. And you'll note that two cost legendaries in particular have some pretty risky outcomes. Of course, there are things like Cadgar and Blood Mage Thanos and Arc Mage Arugal that are not that bad, but then you've got like Millhouse Manastorm, which can be really risky, and Lorewalker Cho and Nat Pagel. So this one's not an obviously good thing Thing that you would always want to do particularly in a murloc deck where you might prefer the murlocs and that's by design i didn't want this to be super strong because finley himself is just really good as a 2-3 the splash bringer is a little bit better as a three mana weapon that's a 2-2 that's not the best outline for three mana obviously but it's okay and it does the opposite of the the mount here in this case after attacking a legendary minion transform it into a one cost minion so this is kind of a polymorph style effect but one that might result in you taking a ton of damage and uh, not even really removing anything. You know, you can imagine attacking uh, a card, the Soul Flare, with us taking nine damage just to get the bloods out of play, and therefore it never dies. But you take nine damage, and you still got a minion on the board. So uh, not the kind of thing that's particularly powerful in the late game, perhaps, or in turn three. Transform effects are good, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be the best tool in your arsenal, just a complimentary sort of thing. But all in all, I think this is a fun way to play with the hero power references of Sir Finley here via the Golden Beetle. You know, Bran was a battle cry as well. Uh, Elise's was spell based and she shuffled a spell into your deck back in the days. And that takes us to our good friend Reno. And here we have Camelback Reno for Mage. And it has been confirmed that Reno is 
going to be for Mage. Mike Dene confirmed that on Reddit. Six mana, five, six here. Uh, again, following that stat progression. Over the Hump being a seven mana spell here, which I had a particularly funny name. If your deck contains no duplicates, as we saw in the past arena, for the rest of the game, minions you play restore five health to your hero. So it's a longer term heal effect than Reno used to offer, but still the same kind of thing. And my thought was here, you know, if you get to a point where you can play a seven mana spell, which is really expensive, then you should be rewarded for it first off, right? It needs to be meaningful because that's a big commitment, but that kind of means you're over the hump, right? Like you've gotten past that aggro deck and you're starting to stabilize. So the name here is not just a pun with gambles, but also kind of symbolic of what I think the effect could be. And then Reno's weapon is the Crystal Cannon. Uh, mage weapon here. We've seen him holding this giant cannon with crystals on the end, some kind of crystal gun, a wand gun, I think was a reference Mike Denae made. And when your opponent plays a duplicate card, so in other words, if they play a card that is uh, a card they also have in their deck, so if they play one that's in their hand, but it's also in their deck, that would count as a duplicate card. It deals five damage to them. So you're rewarded for not having duplicates and your opponent could be punished for having duplicates, but of course at a cost of an eight mana weapon. That's kind of risky by design. This is much more of a late game style card than our previous ones, but it might be a point where they just have to think about it a lot. If they don't have weapon removal, they're gonna get stuck taking a ton of damage while you're restoring a bunch of health. A cool late game control scenario for a card like Reno. And that wraps it up for my kind of weapon slash mount conspiracy from all the stuff we've seen. I also wanted to toss in some cards that were just a little more basically designed. They didn't have any kind of direct, you know, theory from the videos, just cards based on the characters as we know them. So for instance, here we have Mapmaker Elise, a nine mana five six with a battle cry at a random pack from the past to your hand. So any old expansion, whereas we used to get on Guru packs with Elise, this could give you one from any expansion. For instance, I gave a Goblins versus Gnomes pack expansion here, and it would just, much like previously, add five cards to your hand. The big difference here for uh, this version of Elise, and the reason she's so much more expensive than the other one, is this adds it to your hand immediately, as opposed to you have to finding it later, which I think is significantly more powerful because it gives you five resources instantly now you can't play them the same turn at nine mana that's by design but still they're going to be there very shortly whereas the pack can sometimes take you a really long time so i thought this deserved a mana penalty to make up for that it's kind of like drawing five cards pretty soon after playing it now this is a passive turn for druid it's hard to play nine mana stuff this would not be good you know in an aggro matchup but in a control matchup where you just need additional resources in hand you need to find threats something like map maker at least could do that and druid's ramp abilities I mean you could play this a little bit sooner so it's not really like a nine mana card in some ways it might be like a six or seven mana card and uh, i like the idea that you know getting a random pack you never really know what's up for grabs but i'm going to assume much like the ungrow packs back in the day this would be boosted to give you a higher rate of legendaries and epics than you'd ever expect in a normal pack like sometimes you get two or three legendaries in your release packs and i think that would hold true here as well so now let's talk about Bran the Tamer. This one uh, reference to Bran's battle cry activations. Four mana, three, four, Bran here. But your opponent's battle cry effects do not activate. I think we've needed a tech card like this for a long time that shuts out battle cries. And I figured, you know, if you're staring down this crazy, uh, scary dinosaur across from you, maybe you'd be a little too scared to yell, and that felt a bit like Bran. Beyond that, if he's taming these wild dinosaurs and raising them, he's also probably quieted them a little bit too, so they're not roaring so much. So shutting down their battle cries actually made a lot of sense as a reference to Bran, but also just based on the story we're seeing unfold with this character. And uh, I think this would be a nice card to have in Hearthstone. It just makes things hard. There's so many battle cries in Hearthstone. Some decks rely on them, so you could use this as a tech card against like big combos and scary kinds of plays. Um, your minion, your opponents would just have to play minions sometimes and, you know, poor stats. So Bran having poor stats here doesn't matter because this is more about answering specific sorts of things. I don't know if this feels like particularly legendary in its effect, but it's still pretty fitting for the character, I suppose. Similarly here for Finley, this one I'm just calling Finley the Brave, a three mana, two, four. With a battle cry, give your opponent a new random basic hero power so the old version of finley gave you a hero power but what if now you're giving your opponent a hero power we know we're going to get these upgraded crazy hero powers uh, from the legendary quests in saviors of old doom there are still some uh, hero card hero powers floating around out there as well things like hagatha dr boom mad genius and a tech card like this to help shut down the 
uh, ever-increasing threat of hero power dominance, I think would be very, very important. And again, particularly fitting for Finley, who is a dude who likes to manipulate hero powers. This one just makes a ton of sense to me, despite how easy and simple it is. And then finally, for my last card here, I got a fun version of Reno. This is the Crystal Cannon Reno, a six mana, four six, of course. With the Battle Cry, shuffle the five power crystals into your deck. And I wanted to create here like an all-in-one combo card. We have so many combo decks in Hearthstone where you have to draw certain things, accrue these specific pieces of the puzzle, and then once they all line up, you get to do your crazy cool combo. Uh, but that can be a frustrating deck building challenge sometimes. So what if we had a card that just bundled all of that experience together by itself? And that's what this does. Because the power crystals are just cards that you have to draw. They don't do anything else. They're just dead spells, basically. But once you get five of them, they're going to combine together automatically in your hand. And they're going to create the crystal cannon, which is a 10 mana weapon with, that's right, 30 attack and one durability. So if you get this to line up... And, and keep in mind, it's not going to be that easy to get this to line up. You have to draw five dead cards. They don't have cast when drawn or anything. So you actually have to draw these cards that don't do anything. You have to sit with dead five spots in your hand. And then you get this crazy fun weapon, the Crystal Cannon, which can do uh, two different things. Sometimes you can just outright kill your opponent if they don't have a taunt. If you get it, you just hit them for 30. They don't have armor. It's GG. Beyond that, you can play it as a Reno Jackson style effect. If they do have a taunt or they have a ton of armor and you just need to gain some life, then you can use the lifesteal effect on this for a 60 health swing. You can hit them for 30, heal yourself, you know, for 29, I guess. A 59 health swing would be more accurate. But I like that it bundles this Reno idea together, but it also has this offensive nature as well as it's just like crazy big cannon that Reno's utilizing and yes that alone is very very powerful but the the path to get there is pretty long and pretty hard and probably makes this card not all that good I think this is kind of a weak combo because combo decks usually have flexibility with their combo cards in dire situations this one doesn't you're just adding five dead draws to your deck and that could be pretty hard to achieve but that's by design I wanted this to feel like a bit more of a meme a bit more of a fun challenging sort of thing is you just you know a basic generic competitively viable sort of card and i think i achieved that pretty well so there you go folks those are eight uh guesses on potential league of explorers legendary cards i want to know what you guys think about my conspiracy theory for weapons and mounts with these uh characters it just seems so intentioned uh intentionally putting these things in the trailer calling you know specific attention to them it looked like it was a purposeful sort of thing. It didn't seem random. It seemed very conspicuous. And Blizzard's very careful about what they put in these things. They spent a lot of time making these cinematics. I don't think they would have done that without reason. Now, are the end results going to look anything like what I have? Maybe not. Maybe we'll just get legendary minions. Maybe weapons will just be their own cards. Splashbringer will just be like an epic card. Maybe there's a mount card as well. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I want to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think these cards are going to look like? Are they going to be hero cards? Are they going to be minions? Are we going to have weapons? Are we going to have mounts? I want to hear all of your take because you guys are pretty smart out there too. Maybe I got it all wrong. Share that in the comments below. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.